Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dylan James. I'm a mindset coach that loves to specifically focus on relationships. And before we get into today's video, remember that life is not happening to you, but happening through you. When you become the change you seek to experience, you're going to experience that change everywhere you go. You guys know the drill. You are showing the world how to treat you based on what you believe and feel about yourself. And you're creating your reality in a moment to moment basis on the meaning and the value that you assign to the things that are occurring around you, whether or not you believe these set of circumstances presented to you are impossible or over surmounting, that they're never going to change. If that's what you believe and that's what you feel, and you're making that choice, you could just as easily go in the other direction, work on your self-concept, build better beliefs, soothe your feeling state, come more into alignment and clarity with what it is that you want and pleasantly expect this outcome. And you're going to see that as you make this shift in your awareness, in your feeling state, in your internal dialogue, which you believe is possible for yourself, that you're going to be able to persist and actually create the desired outcomes that you desire. Now, today's video on Instagram, okay? If you do follow me on Instagram, then this is no surprise to you, okay? We're talking about stopping no longer accepting less than what you deserve. And this all ties together, especially when it comes to creating the relationship that you desire, right? You're showing the world how to treat you based on what you believe and feel about yourself. You're showing your partner how to treat you based on what you believe and feel about yourself, what you dominantly expect, what you assume, how you think they're going to respond to you, whether you're doing this verbally, non-verbally in your body language, whether you're manifesting it in as a circumstance to you. It's a really, really important for you to become self-aware. So if you're following me on Instagram, you already know that my whole is about no longer accepting treatment that is not what you know you deserve and not living in fear about that. I think the one thing that I see as a consistent thing that, I, you know, I don't want to say a lot of people, but a consistent thing that I'm seeing a few people struggle with is they are afraid. They would rather accept the little bit that they're getting and they're not able to make a clear decision on exactly what they want, that this acceptance of the little bit that they're getting is allowing these behaviors and this treatment to continue to propagate. Instead of deciding, you know what? No, I am husband. I'm wifey. I always get what I want. I'm going to trust. I'm going to build my confidence. Anything that does not feel good to me is not getting my attention. I'm going to remove myself and know that I'm going to get the treatment that I deserve. And it does need to be a firm decision like that. Okay. But before we get into all that, okay, I am going to say what we're talking about in this video. I have a few things that I wrote down here that I want to go over. Um, and I like to do this. You guys know I like to do this just so that because don't normally my videos are like what 30 minutes long. So I don't want you sitting there listening to the video that you're like, this is totally not relevant to me. Okay. I want to make sure that whatever I'm putting out up front, you know, like, oh yeah, this could actually be really beneficial for me. So I'm going to lay out what we're going to talk about here. I don't think this video is going to be an hour long. I think I'm going to be able to get through this in like 20 to 30 minutes. But uh, but yeah, I still want to give you the overview. So we're going to first start off with fearless self-concept and how that relates to the story in, the, in your mind and whether or not you're living in fear. We're going to talk about deciding and not faltering in that decision. We're going to talk about feeling states, controlling anything that doesn't feel good. And we're going to go even a little deeper into that in this video. I know the last video that I put out, I focused on feeling state. But once that sinking realization, that thorough realization comes into your awareness that you are the one creating what you feel within you, and in order to materialize stable love into your life, happiness, success into your life. You have to decide to feel that way before it shows up. Meaning that if I want to create a loving relationship, if I'm always waiting for somebody to pick me or give me the love that I deserve, then I'm going to be constantly waiting. I have to give that to myself. How can I set up my day in a way that establishes and self-creates love within me, right? Aligning your feeling state is really important. We're going to talk about more of that, though, in this video, okay, later on. The next thing we're going to talk about is confidence, being respectful as you're doing this. Because, yeah, if you're getting a treatment that you don't deserve and you continue to accept that and you're living in fear that if you just, like, you know, remove yourself and, and no longer entertain these circumstances – you have to be able to do that in a way that's respectful. Sometimes we can fall into the pattern of getting jaded or angry or, you know, um, 
getting into fights that create more problems. So how do you remove yourself and say, no, this is no longer going to be a part of my experience in a way that actually translates and gets you the results that you desire. We're going to talk about that in this section of this video. And the last thing I'm going to end on is story time from my personal experience, how this actually unfolded in my reality. And I'm going to use myself as an example. So, uh, so we'll, we'll get into that towards the end of the video. Okay. So like I said, the first thing we're going to talk about is fearless self-concept. If this is not your first time on my channel, then you know what a self-concept is. Okay. If this is your first time on my channel, then I'm just going to briefly go over it. So your self-concept is your self-image what you believe and feel about yourself at a core foundational subconscious level. It's beliefs that you've picked up throughout your childhood, throughout your life experience. Um, and it's pretty much the dominant expectations or the assumptions that you make whenever you find yourself in certain situations. So when it comes to no longer accepting less than what you deserve, you really need to make sure that your self-concept is augmented and aligned with beliefs like I'm always honored, I'm always accepted for who I truly am, I'm always loved for who I truly am, I'm confident with who I am, I am embraced for who I am, I'm able to speak my mind freely, I'm confident with what I say, I am knowing my truth, I'm honoring my truth, I feel confident with my truth, I am strong in who I am, what I know I deserve, and I believe that I'm worthy of those things. I believe that I can sustain those things in my life. I believe that anything that is not that it is not a part of my experience. I'm very confident with my ability to really decipher things in my reality and only allow into my experience what it is that I know I deserve. You need to have that self-concept, some a variation of something like that in alignment, okay? Because when it comes to no longer accepting what you don't deserve, especially when it comes to somebody that you have a previous pattern in, okay? You have to first ask yourself, and, and this is more for somebody, again, that has, you know, like if you're trying to fix a relationship with somebody, okay? If you're just wanting to materialize a relationship with somebody that you've never had a relationship with before, then just getting that self-concept piece in alignment is going to work to your advantage so much. But if you have a history with somebody or you have this deeper rooted pattern within yourself where you're expecting that you're going to get ghosted, where you're always the side chick or the side dude, or you're not ever getting the commitment that you deserve, then you, you're you going to need to take a little bit more time on focusing on that self-concept, but particularly somebody that you have a history with, okay? This is a really, really, really important first step, okay? Because in order to no longer get this treatment that you don't deserve, you have to be able to stop being angry with the person, resentful, mad at them, and ask yourself how you got here to begin with. And this is not to victim blame, okay? I, I know like when somebody is giving you treatment that you don't deserve, that that is really not pleasant. And again, you don't deserve it, but you did play a role in where you got, okay? And we can be fair and we can take ownership and accountability for that, okay? Meaning, how, like, what beliefs did I hold about myself that gave this person the idea or the allowance to create this behavior and this dynamic where they thought it was appropriate to treat me this way? Does that mean that I'm going to take necessary, like, ownership for exactly what they did? No, because if they do something that's really hurtful, they have to take ownership for that. And we're going to talk more about the whole limiting beliefs and how to persist if, if other people have limiting beliefs in your reality. That's going to go into my story time later on. But if you can have the level of awareness and you can detach from the emotional impact of what has occurred to you, if you really want to fix a relationship and you want to change the dynamic between you and this person, you have to stop being angry with them and pointing the finger at them and start asking yourself, what about myself actually contributed to the dynamic that was formed here? What beliefs did I hold about myself? Was I not believing in myself? Was I fearful to speak my truth? Was I not confident? Was I dishonoring myself? Was I undervaluing myself? Was I, I don't, I don't know, was I lying to myself? What is it about myself that I allowed this dynamic to form with this person? Okay. This is really important for multiple reasons. I was going to say too, but there's multiple reasons. And you're going to see this on your own journey as you implement this. But I think one of the biggest reasons why this is important is because 
when you take accountability for your part and what you have created for your life, you are able to no longer be angry. You're able to turn it into a growth process and you're actually able to let it go and move forward with your life and actually create what it is that you want. If you are filled with anger, resentment, sadness, pain, hurt, and you're victimizing yourself over the things that have occurred for you, while that victimization may be, you know, it is valid when somebody does something wrong to you, that's totally valid, but that keeps you stuck. Okay. So if you can ask yourself, how did I get here where this dynamic formed? Then now we're talking about actually being able to break these patterns. Okay. So once you figure that out and you adjust those beliefs, okay, you then need to ask yourself, what is attractive to you? Because the next part that I see people struggle with is the story mine and living in fear of if I no longer accept this and I tell this person no, or I remove myself and I try to change this, they're never going to talk to me again. They're not going to like me. They're going to find somebody else. You essentially keep yourself stuck because you're afraid to step into this version of yourself because you think you're going to lose this person that you want, which is a total, it, it's not, it's you living in fear. You're, you're not allowing yourself to actually step into this version of yourself. You would, this is goes back to how did this dynamic even form? You're dishonoring yourself. You are allowing somebody to give you a treatment that you don't deserve because you are in more fear about losing them than you are about actually being this authentic version of yourself that is not going to accept a bullshit from anybody. That's a problem. That is a problem. Do you see how that could be a problem? Do you see how you could find yourself in this dynamic if that's what you're doing? Okay. So the next question you need to ask yourself is what is attractive to you, right? So I would say, you know, 10 times out of 10, what we find attractive, 11 times out of 10, is confidence. And in fact, this is not just a manifestational principle. This is well documented in psychology, relationship psychology. The number one most attractive trait in a relationship is confidence. It's not your bank account. It's not how you look. It's not how tall you are. Those things can be great. The looks doesn't really matter because if you are not confident with yourself, if you're riddled with insecurity, doubt, and fear, and your self-concept is not aligned, I don't care how good looking you are, how much money you have, you're going to push anybody out of your life. It's confidence, right? So what is attractive to you? This is a really important question to ask yourself because if I want to actually get the treatment that I deserve and I want to see something in here, that means I'm going to have to fearlessly show up as this new version of myself, which brings me to the next point. It doesn't matter if the people around you don't like it at first, right? Because if I've shown you through my behaviors and the dynamic that I've formed with you that it's acceptable to treat me in a way that I don't deserve, then of course you're not going to like it when I change, right? Because now I'm setting a new standard. But if you can confidently set the standard in your reality, that's respectful, stable, mature, non-attacking, uh, non like you're not making negative assumptions, like this person isn't going to like me, they're never going to talk to me again. And I'm going to talk about how to do all this later on in the video. But the, the main point that I want to say here is you have to get past the mental hurdle of I'm not going to be liked, loved, embraced, accepted. This person is going to leave my reality. They're never going to talk to me again. They're going to want to meet somebody else. You have to drop that and stop caring. Yes, they may not like it at first, right? That's a story that you build in your mind. And if you focus on that and you think that them not talking to you for a day or two because you decided to honor and love yourself is a problem, you're going to see that shows up as a problem. You could just as easily go in the opposite direction and be like, you know what? They actually think it's so attractive that I'm so confident within myself. They actually love seeing me being this strong, amazing individual that knows their own worth, that knows how amazing they are, that knows what they want and is not accepting or settling for anything less. And they respect me. They love me for that. That's actually what is attractive. They love seeing me confident. If you can build that story in your mind instead of fearing that stepping into this version of yourself is going to cause you to lose the thing you know, that you want, this relationship that you desire, then you're going to see that as you persist and you hold strong to what you know you deserve and you don't allow whether or not them, them liking it at first to discourage you, then you're going to be able to persist in a way that gets you the result that you want. So essentially what I'm telling you is if they don't like it at first when you're making these changes, who cares? Who cares? You 
need to see that in order to create the relationship that you desire, if you have shown up in a way in the past that allowed a dynamic to form that was less than what you deserve, there's going to be an adjustment period. And in my honest opinion, it's much more attractive when you are confident with yourself and, and not accepting anything less than what you deserve. Like, yes, people may not like it at first, but they're going to respect you in the long term and they're actually going to show up and love you the way that you deserve. So there's going to be an adjustment period and you need to go through that adjustment period firstly, because if you're more afraid to lose somebody than you are to honor yourself, that is a problem. That is the problem. Okay. <laughs> that is the problem. All right. So the next topic we're going to talk about is deciding and not faltering in the decision that you're making. Okay. Again, this kind of piggybacks off of what I was just talking about. So I will see people say like, if I do this, my person's not going to talk to me again, or they'll start building a whole story about what they expect this person to be doing. Okay. The whole point to consciously creating your reality is that you decide. You decide how your story is going to unfold. You are showing people how to treat you. You are, you are forming assumptions and you're going to see if you look back in your experience that when you have persisted in an assumption or an awareness of a certain circumstance, it unfolds in that way. So if you're over here like trying to implement this, but then you're thinking they're not going to like it. They're never going to talk to me. They're going to be doing this. They're going to be doing that. They're going to, they're going to find that other person attractive that all these fears, doubts, and insecurities. And then you say, what do I do? I'm going to tell you, you decide, are you going to believe that this person is going to love and respect you and honor you and choose to be with you? Or are you going to give more dominantly into your fears, doubts, and insecurities? It is a choice. You have to decide, you know what? No, I'm going to become this version of myself. And like, even some what I'm seeing in front of me is not necessarily what I desire to experience. And I get a little bit of like pushback at first. I know I'm going to get what I want. You have to make a firm decision and how people are going to show up for you. And you need to do that fearlessly. I don't care about the history that you have with this person or what you dominantly expected from the past. That's done. This is a brand new moment. You can decide in this moment to be brand new and you can create a new story about the people that are in your life and you can persist in that story and you're going to see that as you confidently and calmly do that and you place the focus more on yourself, having the best beliefs about yourself, feeling good, loved, accepted, embraced within yourself, that you're going to be able to create that outcome. If you're not able to think about that, I know that can be kind of a different way of operating because yeah, it is pretty normal to look at somebody and say, statistically speaking, based on the behavior that I have seen them over time, it would be reasonable to assume that they're going to show up and act this way. Okay. Well, we're not trying to continue to recreate the same old results. So you have to decide what the new story is going to be, and you have to stick to that decision, period. Okay. Like you, you don't falter. And that's why I said for this section, you need to decide and not falter in that decision. Because again, this goes back to confidence. So if you know what you want and you're clear on who you are and how people are going to show up in your reality, then you're sending out a clear signal to your reality and everybody in your life. This is who I am. This is how you're going to show up if you want to be in my, in my realm in a respectful, loving, confident, stable, secure way. And if you don't like that, I'm not going to give you any attention. I'm going to continue to feel good within myself and pleasantly expect that I'm going to get what I want. If you are so bogged down in your mind about what they could be doing or who they could be talking to or all these other people that could be interfering, it's just not where your awareness needs to go. You're not feeling secure and confident with yourself. What does focusing on that do for you? It's not going to move you closer to what you want. It's going to feel like crap. You're going to be sitting there worried and anxious all day long. Your feeling state's completely knocked off. And that doesn't move you anywhere near towards your solution. You need to, in order to create a stable, secure, healthy relationship, you need to feel stable, secure, healthy, confident with yourself, which means you need to be able to decide what's going to occur in your life and how people are going to show up for you, period. And if they don't show up that way, you don't react to them. You're able to, you know, like you're able to respond to it and deal with it in a mature way, but you realize that nothing is worth sacrificing your internal peace, stability, and love. So if you're not going to show up properly, I'm going to take a step back and honor myself. And you need to do that fearlessly and then decide what is what how it's going to unfold for you. Okay. All right. 
Which brings me to my next point, <laughs> feeling state. Drop anything that doesn't feel good, which I already started to touch on that. But the main thing that I want to go deeper into the feeling state with is it feels really great when we have a partner in our life. It feels really great when we are successful in our career. It feels really great when we're succeeding, right? It feels really great when we get a good grade on our test, right? When we get that external confirmation, right? And we are really trained to look into our external reality and and decide how we are feeling based on the feedback we're getting from our reality. Uh, from a conscious creator standpoint, you're at a disadvantage when you operate that way. Okay. So the main point that I want to drive home here is that nothing is worth your internal peace, stability, nothing. Really, I don't really have anything else to say past that sentence. Once you realize that you, you are, if you're not feeling love and you're not feeling happy and you're not feeling successful and you're waiting for different things to show up in your reality to allow yourself to feel love, happiness, and success, really what you're doing is you are not allowing yourself to feel that way. And then you're looking out into your reality and you're saying, I can't be happy. I can't feel love. I can't feel successful because everybody else is not allowing me to feel this way. Okay. I just want to make that really clear. You can decide what you're feeling and you can build a little routine for your day that self creates that feeling state. Anything that is not feeling good, if you can stop focusing on that and focus on things generally that help you self-create and self-sustain a feeling state within yourself, confidence, love, happiness, success. This doesn't need to be ginormous. You don't need to be going on triathlons and like becoming an Olympian. If you want to become those things, you absolutely can. But what I'm saying here is love, happiness, and success does not come from outside of you. Is it great to have those things? Yes. When we have the physical representation of it in our reality, absolutely. Yes. It's amazing. But in order to sustainably attract and keep the things that you want in your life, you have to decide to feel that way, regardless of what's going on around you. If circumstances around you can dictate your feeling state and what you believe is possible for yourself, you're going to find it very difficult to, to, manifest and maintain these things into your life. If I need my partner to show up in a very specific way in order for me to feel love, then I'm going to be constantly chasing. If I need to get a certain job or a certain career or a certain grade in order to feel successful, I'm always going to be chasing success. At what point are you going to stop chasing everything and decide to give yourself the permission to be happy, feel love, and feel successful. Because the more that you can self-sustain that feeling state, the faster you're going to be able to maintain those results in your life because you're already aligned with it. It's not coming from outside of you. It's being created within you. You're sustaining the feeling state, and then you're externalizing it and drawing it towards you. Think about this logically and rationally, too. If I'm trying to feel love, happy, and successful at all times, and I can sustain that feeling state within myself, no matter what's going on around me, how do you think I'm going to be showing up? How am I going to be in the people around me? How am I going to be inspiring the people around me? How magnetic and joyful and loving am I going to be around? How, like, you have to decide no matter what's going on around you that you're going to be a winner. You're going to be one of the people that does get the love in your life, that does get the success, that does get the happiness because you're creating it within you right now, no matter what's going on around you. That's going to be once you stop looking to your external reality to give you permission to be happy or feel love or feel success, that's going to be where you become unstoppable because nothing's going to throw you off and nothing you're going to see. There's no point in even trying to react or force or manipulate anybody because you're already feeling fulfilled within yourself. And if somebody's not showing up properly, then instead of getting upset and angry with them, you can just say, you know what? I'm not going to respond to that. You, you know what, whatever you're going through, we're going to talk about that limiting belief aspect in a moment. Whatever you're going through, this is not what I deserve. And I'm already happy and loved and fulfilled within myself. So if you're not going to show up properly, I'm not even messed up over it. Like I'm feeling really good and I'm going to just detach from this. I'm going to give you some space to figure out whatever's going on. I know I'm going to decide that you're going to realize how amazing I am and you're going to come back and apologize to me. And I'm going to continue doing me, feeling good with myself, knowing that I'm going to get what I deserve. Okay. And if you can't self-sustain your feeling state and you're waiting for people to show up to give yourself the permission to feel love, happy, and successful, that's going to be very difficult to do because you're going to be more augmented towards dishonoring yourself and chasing somebody because you need them to show up in a particular way for you to actually feel good. That's where you're at a disadvantage. Okay. Next thing we're going to talk about confidence and being respectful. So when you decide to stop accepting less than what you deserve, 
you can do it. What I just listed there, right? Whenever somebody shows up yelling at you or treating you a way that you don't deserve, you can detach. You can say, no, thank you. That is not what I deserve. Thank you very much for, you know, showing up and communicating this to me, but I'm not going to react to this. I hope you have a good day. You can you can say no in that respectful, loving way. You can just stop communicating with them, or you can tell them that it's wrong. Right? These are all these are things that you need to feel confident with. The thing is the being respectful aspect. So when we fall into undesirable patterns with somebody, then your feeling state is off. You have limiting beliefs manifesting because at some, some core level, you don't feel like you can speak your truth. You have an assumption that if you speak up. You're not going to be accepted, loved, or embraced. You believe at some core level that um, if you tell somebody no, they're going to leave your life forever, whatever it may be, something is going on to where when you deliver this message and you say this no, or you do not accept this treatment anymore, you are doing it in a way that causes more problems, meaning you're highly emotional, you're highly reactive, it turns into yelling, it turns into fighting, it turns into a ginormous explosion of an argument, which creates what you fear right? Which is if I say for myself and I tell, and I say, no, then this person is going to leave and they're never going to want to be with me. And they're going to find somebody else. Your whole fear of what you are entertaining materializes into the physical. So whenever you decide to stop accepting less than what you deserve, make sure that when you're doing this, you're doing it in a way, again, ask yourself, what would be, what would be attractive to me? How can I deliver this message in a way that I know is respectful and loving and kind and compassionate honors me doesn't allow me to fall down into being hateful or revengeful or angry or projecting this inner feeling state outwards how can i be the bigger person here right that's essentially what i'm saying okay and then when you do that have confidence with the decision that you've made okay all right so let's talk now about my little story time that i have for you guys okay so you know, I put out a video last week explaining my recent circumstances that I had gone through. And one thing that I'm really grateful for my partner doing, which again, you guys know who that is, is when I was not acting properly, they did not yell at me. They did not fight with me. They did not beg for me to treat them the way that they deserved. They simply just said, you know what? No, nope, this is not what I deserved. They walked out and they didn't communicate with me anymore. Okay. Now, the reason why I'm sharing this story time with you is because what that allowed me to do was instead of arguing or being upset, I was able that, to then look at myself and ask myself, how did I get into this situation where I created this dynamic? And it allowed for me to actually change. Did my partner have to force me to change? No. Did they have to ask me to change? No, they didn't. I changed because I realized, oh, if I want to manifest this relationship back, I have to figure out where I went wrong, right? So they placed a strong no on me. They didn't worry about whether or not I liked it. In fact, they even went as far to say I want to be with you more. And I had to change myself. They did not manipulate me into this change, okay? So when you decide to set a boundary and you say no, you should not have to beg somebody to change, okay? This is where you decide. This is going to be how it is, right? They're going to change. They're going to love and respect me. I'm setting this boundary. They're going to go through this process and I'm only going to entertain them when they show up properly, which is exactly what he did to me. Okay. Now you have to decide whether or not this person is important enough for you to do that. A lot of people, as they start to build their self-concept, they come to realize that who they were with before just was less than what they deserved. And they start to value and reprioritize themselves. However, for me in my situation, I realized, oh, I just was not acting properly. I had limiting beliefs manifest. My focus went off and I created a mess here. So it was worth it for me to go through this change. Also, I hurt somebody that I really love. Even though they were telling me it was never going to work out again, I was able to then change my beliefs, augment my feeling state, not focus on worries or doubts, and persist in my knowing that everything was going to be okay and that we would get back together. I made a firm decision on how it was going to unfold. I did not entertain anything else. Okay. So I do want to touch a little bit here on, you know, the concept of everybody's you push out and limiting beliefs. Okay. So how I understand this, because I do see a lot of people being confused. If, if I have limiting beliefs and my partner has limiting beliefs, then how am I going to change them? 
Okay. This is all about consciously creating. So if you see that has a problem, it's going to become a problem. Okay. I'm going to explain that a bit more though. So how I truly understand this is when you start to do belief work on yourself, you're able to look at behaviors more as a manifestation of a belief that somebody holds about themselves, right? So if somebody's disrespecting me or not honoring me <clears throat> or treating me with a love that I don't deserve, instead of taking that personally, I'm able to look at it and see, oh, wow, you're showing up this way because you don't feel good within yourself. You don't believe that you deserve love. You, you, there's some limitation that's going on here that's materializing this behavior. Okay. Now, when you're able to look at it that way, you no longer feel the emotional impact of how they're showing up. This is so important because instead of taking things personally, if you can see, oh, what's actually going on here is, is actually kind of sad. Like if somebody has an alcohol problem, for instance, that means you don't believe in yourself. You don't think you're worthy of being stable, secure, chosen, um, healthy you're materializing this behavior because of some way that you feel about yourself. Instead of taking that personally and taking it on as a problem that I have, I can now look at it with compassion. This is a very important necessary first step because instead of reacting to things and taking it personally, if you can see what's actually going on, then you can respond to it in a way that actually moves you towards your desired result. And this is something that I've done in my relationship. I mean, since the beginning, instead of looking at how my partner was showing up and getting angry at them, I was then able to look at it and see what was actually going on and say, hey, I think you're acting this way because you don't feel good enough. You don't feel worthy. You don't. There's something going on here with your belief system that you should you should pay attention to. And, and you know, I'm just saying this to you because I love you, whether you end up with me or not. I think this is something that you need to work on within yourself. The key point that I'm trying to make here, though, is I was no longer taking it on as though something was wrong with me. I was able to actually look at the behavior and see what was going on. Then from that point forward, where it no longer threw me off a turn and made me feel like something was wrong with me, I was then able to hold a knowing of, oh yeah, this is totally going to change. Like that's not a problem. I'm not seeing that behavior as something that's permanent. I'm going to create the environment and be so compassionate and loving to cultivate and you know, consciously create this change. And I was able to do it. So when people ask me, but what if my partner has limiting beliefs? Like, how am I supposed to shift them? If you can actually see what is occurring and be compassionate and you don't see it as a limitation or a problem, you're going to be able to actually persist with creating a new dynamic. It's when you react to the people around you and take it personally and that something is wrong with you and it gets a reaction out of you to then you responding to that behavior, that that becomes a problem. But if you can actually see what's going on and see that, you know, I, I genuinely don't believe that anybody wants to hurt anybody else, right? So when we materialize self-sabotaging behaviors, are we trying to do that? No, we're not trying to do that. There's something within us that doesn't feel good enough that's materializing as a behavior. So when other people do that to you too, when they start acting in weird, odd ways, and they're being hurtful out of nowhere, and it's clearly self-sabotage, you can then look at it with compassion. And instead of reacting to it, you're able to actually see what's occurring, not react to it, soothe your feeling state, hold a vision for what it is that you want to experience and deal with what's going on in front of you in a compassionate way that moves you towards the solution. Okay. If you see their limitations as a problem, it's going to continue to show up as a problem. But again, what did I just say there? The main important component of that is I was able to maintain my own feeling state. I was able to still feel confident and loved and chosen and secure myself, which then whenever any weird type of behavior popped up, I didn't react to it. So I was able to persist in what I actually wanted to experience because I had enough awareness to actually see what was occurring and to show up as the solution and to fearlessly do that. Okay. So that's pretty much all I have to say for no longer accepting less than what you deserve. You have to fearlessly cut these things out and trust that that's okay. And that you're going to be accepted and loved and embraced and really see that love and happiness and success is not something outside of you. Okay. Um, I just wanted to end this here with another reminder that life is not happening to you. Okay. It's happening through you. Your power is 
in what you believe about yourself and how you respond to the things that are occurring around you. So if you see everything around you as a problem, as unfixable, as never going to happen, as limitations, that's going to be your experience. When you gain enough self-belief to see and, and, and exist with compassion and persist and knowing that you're going to get what you want in a calm, stable, mature way, you're going to be able to create that solution. Okay, but you have to really see where it does require you to be very stable and secure within yourself. This is not about force and manipulation. It's about being compassionate, loving, stable, secure, knowing your worth, knowing what you deserve, not allowing yourself to entertain your doubts, fears, or insecurities, deciding what it is that you want and knowing that you're going to get that and identifying as the version of yourself that can have that, that can create solutions in your reality and really constantly create what you decide that you want to experience. So it does require you to be fearless. Okay. All righty. 35 minutes. I told you guys I could probably get this video done in about 20 to 30 minutes. So I went a little bit over my mark, but I just want to say thank you for everybody that's here. Thank you for all the thumbs up. I love you all so, so, so much. If something's important to you, you can create the change that you desire to experience or you have to, you have to, you have to figure out really what is important to you. In my experience, my relationship was important enough for me to go through this growth process and believe no matter what was showing up in front of me that I could still create the solution that I desired. So I hope you all have a lovely night. Thank you for being here and I'll see you all later. Bye.